I'm on a quest to find the best out of the box striker fire pistol between 350 and 550 bucks. Alright, so today we're looking at the shootability, the reliability, and the price of the Gen 5 Glock 19. Now, um, a lot of uh, pros, a lot of cons about this particular pistol, but that's neither here nor there. We're just asking ourselves the question, how well does it going to help me shoot, what's its price, and is it reliable? Alright boys and girls, so here we are at 25 yards, going to slow fire this and make sure that the gun is accurate. All right, let's go see how we did. Gun's clear, I'm gonna put it in the back of my pocket. I know it's really not like proper range etiquette, but I'm on my range. Uh, I felt like I did really well, although I haven't seen it. Ooh. <laughs> You're just a Glock fanboy. It's all edited. You can't shoot that well with stuck sights. So um, my first one I threw high, but everything else uh, consistent, good trigger press on my end. If I was looking at a student, I'd be like, hey, good trigger pressing. Uh, but uh, combat sight picture. So basically, I was taking the, um, the, uh, the dot of the front sight put in there and looks like I was pulling down a little bit, but consistently very nice at 25. But here in my mind is where the Glock platform shines. I love its low bore axis and because of that, I can shoot quickly and have really good follow-up shots because I don't have the muzzle jumping all over the place like with higher bore axis guns. We're at 15 yards, 15 rounds, 14 out of 15 hits. It just helps me just, the gun just falls back into place. I'm like, okay, I can pull the trigger. Okay, I can pull the trigger. And that's what, one of the things that I, I teach is, hey man, that, those front sights come back on the target. The trigger should be reset. You should be pressing through that trigger. Is right when the gun falls back on target, press and let the ground fly. It's kind of like the, the front sights give you permission to shoot again almost. But then I can be in defensive distances really, really close up and just jam the gun out and start and I know the gun's not gonna deviate very much as it would with a higher bore axis gun. So I'm a little biased towards uh, lower bore axis guns because I'm a smaller guy, I don't have huge hands, I'm not really ripped, although that looked pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. It's just the shirt. <laughs> and, uh, uh, okay, there's just too much talking going on. So here we are at 50 asking ourselves the question, does the stock Glock 19 with its nasty, ugly sights help me as a shooter be accurately, shoot accurately, consistently, and quickly? Not too bad. Um, I feel like, again, the front sight is just fat, right? It's a front sight. Uh, I don't really care that Glock decided, hey, we're gonna give you more space to make errors with the front sight with as far as alignment. And so, I mean, eh. Over the feature, so I shot it at the torture test first and then forgot to go over the features of the gun. So let's go over some of the features of the new Glock 19 uh, Gen 5. Uh, no finger grooves. Flared Magwell doesn't really help me in reloading. Matter of fact, it, 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 it does the exact opposite. Uh, there's a cool little spot right there to take your finger and pull out any stoppages that you would have with a Glock. Um, when the gun sits in my hand, um, I don't really care for the ambidextrous stuff that's going on. Matter of fact, I feel as though the more you open up this area, the more you open up the slide, the more you open up it to debris to get down into the tracks of the gun, specifically right there at the locking block. So don't like that. Don't really care for this kind of beveled out front place. It's They say it so that it can go in the holster easier. It's That's just stupid. Um, and because of that, it seems like the boys 
over there at uh, Glock said, hey, we're gonna make sure, we're just gonna take our Gen 4 lowers and throw it on here because there's a space that after they cut that off, there's still a space on the frame. And it just kind of looks a little tacky, in my opinion. Just take something and shave that off. Jeez, make it uniformed. Uh, one of the things that I do uh, love about the Glock, obviously, as you've heard me rave because I'm a Glock fanboy, is the super low bore axis. Now, essentially what that means is where the bore sits in relation to my hand, I can cover up the entire gun and shoot perfectly. The gun just recoils uh, just exactly how I want a gun to recoil in my hand, and uh, there's uh, very few guns out there that can beat it. But I absolutely love the, uh, the grip of the gun, the feel of the gun. I don't care if there's finger grooves or not. It doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me at all. But the way the gun feels in my hand when I shoot it, I absolutely love the grip. It's just your standard Glock trigger pull. A lot of people have said that, oh, well, um, the new plunger safety has made it. No, nah, it's not true. It's just a, it's a stock Glock trigger. It's got a pre to a wall, a big fat wall, usually a little hiccup, but this one just breaks nice and cleanly. Even after all that sand, dirt, and gunk, it's still just, I press it, find the wall, a little hiccup, and then it just breaks. It's about a five and a half pound break so it's a little stiffer than its competitors but still neither here nor there it actually helps me um, to shoot really well so I'm used to shooting a Glock trigger and the new thing that Glock did with the new Gen 5s is that they, they basically made this U and instead of making the U like this they open it up like this so it's kind of cool you can get it faster but it doesn't really help me with accuracy um, all that much uh, it doesn't like offer me this great thing over um, you know, uh, the, the previous sites on previous generations. All right, so let's do that Indiana dirt test. And because it's a Glock, we're gonna give it some more. Oh, I don't like not having a gun point at my knee, but it's unloaded, so, oh. There we go. Fires. Yes, it did, just like you'd expect. All right, let's do that fine sand test. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, let's just, you know, let's just get her all covered there. You know, I gave it a little shake. I'm not gonna give it a shake this time. I'm just gonna lift it out, just like that. Let's go. All right, with sand. Ooh, that didn't sound good. Yep, worked just fine. Let's take it to the baptism test. Now we must wash the Glock of its sins. The bubbles going, yep. You know, baptism is actually not a Christian tradition. It didn't originate with uh, Christians, it originated with Jews. Uh, if an infidel, a Roman, wanted to be uh, come into faith, they had to shave off all their hair and then be baptized. And when they got out of the water, they were literally going from death to life. They were being born again, right? And because they were being born again, um, uh, they didn't have any legal possessions. <laughs> they often had a name change. It was kind of cool. All right, let's see how this does with the baptism test. Just like you'd expect, just like you'd expect. All right, so when the rubber meets the road, how does the Glock rate the reliability department? It's kind of a bias for me because I've had hundreds of thousands of rounds through Glock platforms. I've had 30,000 rounds through my uh, Salient Arms International Tier 1. I've had two stovepipes, right? I've had 2,200 rounds of this gun. I've had one stovepipe and it ate the sand test, it ate the dirt test, it ate the baptism test. I can't really ask for anything more in the reliability department of the Glock. Uh, I know the gun is safe. I know the gun is drop safe. I know the gun will continue to work uh, fully in all adverse shooting conditions. So I, I, I am a Glock fanboy. Because of that, I'm going to give the reliability an eight and a half out of 10. Now, when it comes to the trigger, we gotta ask ourselves the question, how well does the trigger help me as a shooter be accurate? Now, the trigger is not as nice as an HK VP9. It's not as nice as a CCP 10C. It's not as nice as a Canic, right? But the trigger still helps me keep a very good group um, uh, in conjunction with the sights at 25. Still helps me shoot really well at 50, um, and, uh, and I like it. So, given that and comparing, out of out of 10 comparing it to the rest of our guns I'm gonna give the trigger a 7 out of 10 
when we talk about the grip of the firearm, it's recoil impulse, the lower axis, the overall grip, how the gun feels in my hand, all those different types of things. I'm gonna give this a little higher rating. I'm gonna give this an eight and a half out of 10. I think that there are very few things that a Glock platform needs in order to help the shooter any more when it comes to gripping the firearm. And then we come to the sights of this silly gun. Well, geez, Barry, you can't pass. If you don't give these sights a two, then you're just a Glock fanboy. Well, let's let's look at this. Um, we can hit accurately and precisely at 25. We can hit very well at 50 consistently. Uh, the sights, are they are they what I prefer? Absolutely not, right? Are they better than a CZP 10C? Nope, not in the slightest. Uh, so they help me and that's what it comes out to. It, you know, if they come out of the box this way and out of the box, do they help the shooter uh, communicate to me? Does the gun communicate to me where the point of aim and the point impact is yes it does so with all that I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10 and now we move on to the price of the firearm I actually spent 440 bucks on this gun new and out the door I was ex actually pretty excited because it was like one of the first uh, weeks that the gun came out that I was able to pick it up so picking up at that price rule king thanks for the hookup <laughs> right uh, it's a uh, it's pretty good I was really excited about that all right so if you're following along at home and you're doing the math you will have find that we have an overall score of this gun at 7.75 out of 10. Congratulations. Glock right now is in the lead right above or right uh, below is the CZP 10C at 7.6. Matter of fact, let's just list everything right here just so you can see how the guns rate in their shootability, their reliability, and of course their price. Well guys, thank you so much for joining us on our quest to find the best out-of-the-box pistol. Guys, next time we've got the SIG P320. A lot of people love this gun. A lot of people hate this gun. Uh, we're going to look at its shootability, its reliability, and of course, its price next time we come back. Stay tuned. Guys, True Exodus here. Hold fast. Stay the course. Out. Oh! 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 <laughs> That's going to go into the reliability score.